Okay, the risk management framework is observed and implemented via the following principles. Governance maintained from the delegation of authority from the board. We've just seen that with the two uh, org charts that I just showed you. The whole point of risk management is supports the safe delivery of the bank's you know, business objectives. Uh, it's based on the four lines of defense model. Now, I've written down there four lines of defense. Sometimes you see three lines of defense. The fourth line of defense is, of course, the external auditor. I, I personally do not, um, do not have any uh, particular preference for either three or four lines of defense. They're, they're, for, as far as I'm concerned, as far as the PTRM is concerned, uh, they're both effective. Um, so, although they, they, one can still you know, present a critique of this framework, the three lines of defense or four lines of defense framework. For the time being, from what I observe around the world, for the time being, regulatory authorities, bank supervisors, would expect to see the risk management framework implemented and, and monitored through the three or four lines of defense mechanism. So um, we, I'm just going to assume, we at the BTRM assume that we should be familiar with this and operate through this framework because that's what the regulator expects to see, the three or four lines of defense framework. Uh, risk mitigation and control activities are commensurate with the degree of risk and is proportionate to the scale of complexity of the bank. Yes, the more complex the bank, the more sophisticated the balance sheet, then of course, the more complex the risk mitigation and control activities might be expected to be. Uh, and the last point there is repeating what I said earlier, risk management isn't just about mitigating risk exposure or indeed minimizing exposure. It's also about ensuring continued viability. That means it has to pay as close attention, I would suggest, to the profit, the PL objective, as it does to the risk management and risk mitigation objective. Okay, just for your reference there, the three or four lines of defense. As I said, the fourth line of defense is the external auditor. It's more common to see three lines of defense, the business lines, which also includes finance and the treasury function. The second line of defense, which is purely the CRO function, the chief risk officer function. And the third line of defense, which is internal audit. Now I've written in that second line of defense, I've written risk and compliance. It's quite common to see the compliance function within the risk function. Personally, I don't recommend that anymore. I think compliance is a different discipline to risk to, to the second line of defense. So I'd actually have compliance separate from the risk function and part of the first line of defense. Now that's quite a significant change to what you see there in front of you. Um, the reason I've kept slide 13 there is because it's the most common uh, for, uh, model operating model that one sees. Uh, but I do think it's worth having a review of that and asking yourself whether the compliance function is second line of defense and should be part of risk or whether it's first line of defense reporting into the chief exec. Um, I personally, I think the reason I say this is because compliance to me is more a rules-based discipline. It's, it's rules-based. You follow the rules. Here are the rules. They're, they're fairly explicit. We follow them. And if we are compliant, then great. Whether it's money laundering, know your customer, that sort of thing. Um, Second line of defense to me is the independent oversight review and challenge function. So that isn't so much risk, uh, sorry, that isn't so much rules based. It's more of the independent, independent from the business lines review and challenge function. To me, it's, there is, it's not as rules based as compliance. So I would separate the two. It's common to see the two, which is why we have that on slide 13. But I want to bring to your attention that they can be considered to be separate and we should review this framework at least every year. Okay, uh, and slide 14, a critique of this three lines of defense model. Have a read of that in your own time. The text in brown there, all those critique points about the three lines of defense model, that's actually taken from the Institute of Internal Auditors, not uh, word for word, it's not a direct quote. I've just summarized something I've seen from the Institute of Internal Auditors that is being critical of the three lines of defense model. I think it's worth being aware of this, but as I said, as long as the regulator expects to see the three lines of defense model, we would be obliged to, 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 to observe it and have it in place. But we should also be aware of the critique of this, this, this more operating model. And I think the Institute of Internal Auditors, whose, whose website text on this I have summarized there for you in my own words, I think it's worth being aware of this because I think they've got a point in, in some of what's said there.